Swagger File Generation In IRCS, we can generate Swagger files that define the REST service when we configure the REST connection. When we generate a Swagger file, we send an API call to the web service and a sample request is made. We also have an option to specify the REST client's response in the form of a JSON file. It is important to note that if we provide this response file, an API call to the web service is not made. Furthermore, we cannot modify a Swagger file once it is created. To make any changes to it, we must generate a new Swagger file. Before we generate a Swagger file, we must make sure that we have the REST Swagger Generator package license enabled in our org. To check that, log in to IICS and select Administrator Service. In the Licenses tab, in the Features section, observe that the REST Swagger Generator license is enabled. If this package is not available, we can contact Global Customer Support to enable it. Now, before we create a Swagger file using a URL, we must check if the URL gives a successful output in a REST client. For example, we will make an IICS login call. Let's check the URL in Postman. Select the request as post and in the URL field, copy the login URL. Add suitable headers and assign values to them. In the body tab, enter the payload and send the request. Observe that we get a successful output here. This means that the URL and the payload are valid to generate a Swagger file. Now, in the Swagger Files tab, let us create a new Swagger file. Specify a name and select the runtime environment. In the URL field, enter the URL that consists of the host name and the port number. In the verb field, select the REST method that is used by the web service. IICS supports GET, POST, PUT and DELETE methods. If needed, we can select the authentication type to log in to the web service application. However, the default authentication type is none. The API base path specifies the path on which the API is served. It is specified after the host name and the port, whereas the API path is the one specified after the API path. Note that the API path can include query parameters. In this case, do not specify them in the query params field. The username and password are required to log into the web service application when we set the authentication type to basic, digest or OAuth. The token and the token secret fields specify the access token and the password associated with the OAuth token that is required for OAuth authentication type. The consumer secret field specifies the client password to connect to the web service application. This is also required for the OAuth authentication type. Let us enter the operation ID that is a unique text identifier for the API path and enter the payload in the raw body field. This is the same payload that we enter while validating the URL in Postman. Now save the Swagger file. The entry for the Swagger file appears in the Swagger files page. In case of failure while connecting to the web service, the fault response obtained from the web service is logged in the Swagger files page. We can download the Swagger file to save it in a local directory. To use this Swagger file in the REST v2 connection, we can copy the file to the secure agent machine that will be used to create a REST v2 connection. In this way, we can create a Swagger file and use it when we configure a REST v2 connection.